across the UK. Online, on DAB+, and on the Talk Radio app. Evenings with Kevin O'Sullivan on Talk Radio. Lots still to come here in the final hour of this rip-roaring three-hour thrilling radio spectacular. Uh, we're going to talk about the BBC now. Uh, now, much has been made of how transparent the Beeb has become, uh, publishing this annual list of its highest paid stars. Uh, but in fact, uh, the BBC, the state broadcaster, is now being accused of actually being far less transparent than we thought. Uh, in actual fact, it's being accused of pretend transparency while keeping quite a few secrets. Uh, so uh, let's listen to what the BBC used to be like. Is over. 10 o'clock. This is BBC Home Mill. Service. Here is the news. Decisions are agreed Martin. on final victory. Uh, well, it's 9 o'clock, isn't it? See, it's the BBC always get everything wrong. They always get everything wrong. It's not 10 o'clock. It's 9 o'clock. Uh, so uh, tomorrow, Tim Davey, the... Director General of the BBC has to go to uh, Parliament uh, to a uh, committee where he is going to be grilled about all such matters. Uh, so the MPs are going to quiz him on the way the corporation discloses the pay of its top stars amid allegations of smoke and mirrors tactics that disguise the true cost of its highest paid on air staff. So, for example, Claudia Winkleman, uh, Strictly Come Dancing host, of course, uh, gets a lot of money for that, also presents Radio 2, a Radio 2 show. Uh, now, she uh, doesn't even feature in the highest paid star salary list. Uh, because uh, they say, oh, well, you see, the thing is, Strictly is made by BBC Enterprises. Uh, that's a commercial arm, and so that's not the same as the rest of the organisation. So we don't have to tell her what she earns. And then you get these diktats from Tim Davies saying, right, from now on, no more staff can tweet their political opinions. I don't want to see any more people knocking Boris, uh, being anti Brexit uh, being left wing as they tend to be at the BBC and then you know about three minutes later up comes another one of those infuriating Gary Lineker tweets you know knocking Brexit having a go at Boris proving what a great guy he is that he cares about the world all that rubbish uh, and they go well hang on a second what about him and they go oh yeah well you see Gary's not on the staff Gary's a contracted person so he's essentially a freelance so he can say what he wants you see what i mean it's all uh, mealy words clever words smoke and mirrors uh, and they're not actually being transparent uh, and forthright and straightforward like they should be uh, let's talk uh, in the studio to conservative commentator connor tomlinson evening connor evening kevin pleasure as always uh, your comments uh, your thoughts are on uh, this duplicitous nature of the BBC's approach to uh, their star salaries for a kickoff. I think I had better excuses for not handing in my homework as a teenager. Uh, uh, the the idea of any transparency is a, is a facade to deflect away saying, oh, well, it's the, it's the corporate arm, you know, we sell the shows on, uh, etc. Well, if you're using the same infrastructure to produce the shows, distribute them, etc., then the other side of it is getting taxpayer funding. So you're being subsidised, so you're factoring in all the costs on that side and then not having to pay it on the other side. And that's why you can pay out shed loads of money to presenters who, quite frankly, don't particularly earn it, especially if you see the ratings of these shows plummeting into the toilet. Doctor Who's been killed off. As we saw the Strictly ratings the other night, I'm pretty sure everyone was watching me on GB News instead on Saturday, but uh, the actual t ratings tanked. I below. doubt that, mate. Oh, well, well, you break my heart, Kevin. Um, but the actual ratings have tanked to an all-time low, and it's unsurprising when you're regurgitating the same old thing. Um, you're you're dragging out a bunch of no-name stars and the presenters aren't exactly the most dynamic people in the world. I'll say that because the BBC won't employ me probably ever. Uh, it's uh, BBC Studios. Uh, they, they make Strictly Come Dancing. As you're right about Strictly Come Dancing. It got 7.2 uh, million for its opening show on Saturday. The worst ever ratings uh, for an opening show of Strictly. Uh, but I'm afraid if you churn out, regurgitate exactly the same show mm. year after repetitive year, featuring extremely minor celebrities uh, that no one knows or cares about, uh, then uh, what will happen is plummeting ratings. That's what's going to happen. In other words, uh, they are... 
Uh, they got lazy. They got lazy. Uh, they need to up the star power, need to put more effort into You've got to change the show a bit. It's exactly the same as it ever was. Uh, but that isn't the point of what we're talking about. Now, if you work on Strictly, you don't get your salaries uh, computed by the system of public revelation. Uh, and that's because it's BBC Studios and not the rest of the BBC. Well, we know for a fact, Claudia Winkleman, if not the highest paid person at the BBC, is one of the highest paid people. She doesn't feature. So uh, tomorrow uh, in Parliament at the uh, Select Committee for Digital Culture, Media and Sport, uh, Tim Davy could be in for a hard time. Oh, I think a lot of us are finally salivating the prospect that the, the licence fee may be held under some scrutiny, particularly with the cabinet change with uh, the appointment of Culture Secretary, uh, Secretary and Dean Dorries. She seems a lot more sceptical on whether or not the BBC provides any value anymore. I think uh, everyone around the talk radio offices will say, spoiler alert, it doesn't seem to be so. She also is one of the more people that's more hawkish on repealing things like Section 127 of the Communications Act, which uh, criminalises mm -hmm. speech. So she's very in tune with how the Metropolitan Elite aren't quite engage with what working people want to say and see and so her holding the BBC to account uh, not just for these transparency issues but essentially what value for money are you having um, why supposedly Conservative new appointee uh, Tim Davy is meant to be spending tons of money on the diversity initiatives etc uh, and, and throwing money away on, on not just the salaries but lambasting his own employees with games saying oh how privileged are you and you win if you're, you're an ally and if you uh, defer to uh, women of colour in the office I don't think particularly anyone is going to get quality programming out of sitting down and shutting up and not being particularly forthright in their office um, and hopefully the, the new select committee holds them to account on this yeah, uh, Julian Knight, the uh, Tory chairman of the uh, digital, um, the uh, digital cultural media and sports select committee, uh, said uh, that there is a that there there was a concerning lack of transparency because a number of top earning stars are paid through BBC Studios and their salaries don't appear. He said uh, we're only getting half the picture on whether they are getting value for money. That's a license fee payers. Uh, and he said he called on them to on Tim Davy to drop the smoke and mirrors approach. That's the BBC for you. It's always been secretive. It smacks of a slush fund. And the, the strange thing, obviously, the BBC said its fair share of scandals over the years, mu many uh, are much harsher than this, not just forgetting Martin Bashir fairly recently. But it's strange in all of this to think that, as you said about plenty of times on your show, um, they're, they're essentially prosecuting pensioners for not wanting to pay for this. So the fact that they can be so secretive, pay people tons of money to, to do these shows that nobody particularly wants to watch, mm. but you're forced at literal gunpoint to pay for this sort of thing, and it's the working man and woman who, who may suffer the consequences for not wanting to foot the bill for these all, for these pointless salaries. It's pretty disturbing, actually. Uh, yes, and it, and it is supposed to be the new caring, sharing, transparent, open <laughs> and honest BBC. Wasn't that the Labour Party slogan a couple of years ago? Yeah, work out uh, well, it certainly can never be the BBC's. I mean, plus you get the the fact that, you know, they kid, kid themselves that everyone goes around thinking, oh, the BBC is very unbiased, mm. very uh, politically impartial. A recent poll revealed uh, that... 94% uh, of the population of this country did not believe the BBC was impartial. 6% uh, felt it was honest, fair and balanced. Uh, and what they're talking about there, of course, is the BBC uh, for a long time was Remainer Telly, Remainer TV, tune in uh, for the anti-Brexit news. Uh, it, you know, and its left-wing bias is... Uh, renowned notorious have you seen the uh, just... trust pilot ratings by any chance mm -hmm. it's 93 percent one star and has been for years yeah well there you go <laughs> uh, jess bramar has just been appointed mm. head of news uh she's uh, a well-known left winger who posted lots of tweets anti-boris anti-brexit she was the editor of the left wing huffington post uh, so uh, there were objections to making her uh, this uh, head of news the very important job uh, uh Robbie Gibb, who used to be, she's, he's part of the BBC Trust, he used to be uh, head of staff for Theresa May. He warned the BBC against it, uh, so it'll look bad. Uh, the BBC forge right ahead. They're like naughty school kids. Anything you tell them to do, they won't do. There's not, it's, a, it's a juggernaut that cannot be changed in midstream. I, I, as you said, the, the prestigiousness of its nature has long since waned. Uh, there's not much content for people my age, for example. As soon as you click on BBC iPlayer, just type the term racist in and they've got 
a, a, a simple uh, program saying is the church racist is university racist etc and that's what all the, all the taxpayer money's been essentially thrown away is on. the bbc racist when we think in terms of all the top jobs in the bbc all of which are held by white people well, actually, funnily enough, there were researcher positions that were saying that they uh, needed to be BAME only, so for sitting in the office. Yeah, but that's a researcher. Channel chiefs, heads well, of channels. I agree, but it's it's very funny how they don't seem to consider racism um, uh, when not not in terms of representation on screen, but apparently you need to have a certain skin colour to sit in the office and, and pull stories up for the news, so I would be disbarred from that. Um, I wouldn't hire me either, but not mm. because of how I look. Um, I do, as you said with, with Jess, as we spoke about before, it's also curious that her fella works with the Guardian, oh, did do before, and then they buy they buy the, the single largest supply of Guardian newspapers in the country, and they also buy tons of copies of the Observer. So again, it's just a slush fund straight to the uh, left wing news circuit. It is, uh, and they're fighting for their, uh, you know, the right to carry on charging us nearly 160 quid a year for the TV license. I mean, only the BBC, only the top brands at the BBC don't seem to realise that this strange old tax on Strictly Come Dancing, you know, if you don't pay uh, your license fee to be able to watch Strictly uh, or The Apprentice or some some submarine drama or whatever then you go to jail uh only the top brass at the bbc don't seem to realize that this is a, a weird anachronism and it will die out sooner or later if not sooner well again as i said with my age nobody's really watching the bbc the, the viewing figures exactly uh, uh, nobody younger than joe biden's tuning into strictly on the saturday night let's put it that way um lots of people are going towards netflix i mean I'm, I'm not saying that they're any good either they're incredibly propagandistic and, and just as left-wing if not worse but nobody the the business model isn't very sustainable so if they want to live and die on their own merits which i think that they should with the license fee being taken away they also need to do more representative programming of the British public and not just representative because they think of the diversity quotas because that someone did a breakdown of this and it's actually about double the population of each of the uh, minority groups they purport to represent is actually represented so what is it the 14 percent of uh, Brits uh, I think the minor minorities gets up to about 27 percent on screen and that's not a problem of course because that's it should be about merit and programming the authenticity and the integrity of storytelling but you know that there's a concerted agenda behind the scenes to uh, effectively push forward a, a misrepresentation of society as to what they think it should be more so that's what the uh, doctor who presenter actually said about when they did victorian britain years and years ago he said um oh well we had a we had a lot more different diverse victorians because that's how it should have been yeah i know that's exactly what they do they create a world all of their dramas are a mm. world uh that, that, that they'd like to see as opposed to any kind of uh, depiction of real life and they're not interested in the reality of life they're interested in their cozy north london <laughs> metropolitan e elite way of looking at things it really is uh, getting increasingly pathetic almost tragic really i kind of feel sorry for them they're so stupid uh connor thanks for coming in connor Somerson, conservative commentator there i'm kevin o'sullivan and this is talk radio online on dab and on the talk radio app